Today we are going to introduce you Mr. Anand Bapat, who is a great Shivangu expert, world leader in Shivangu, also a traditional acupuncturist, occupational therapist and also a natural healer. So today we are going to uh, talk with him about Shivangu, his experiences about Shivangu and what is the view uh, and uh, the future of Shivangu. Yes, I welcome Mr. Ambapur on behalf of Hen Siren. And uh, I ask him, what are your experiences about Shivam? Thank you Kapil, thanks for having me here. Let me share some of my thoughts. Shivambu has for long been looked at as a bhakti based on head in the sand philosophy. Nobody wants to know about it. They just want to hear about it and say go away. For the past 25 years, I have been working towards observing, describing and studying the results with a view to how does this damn bhakti work. Some of the stumbling blocks in explaining this phenomena has always been its effectiveness for all illnesses. One of the issues coming from an allopathic background is the fact that we have different medicines for different conditions. But Shivamu works for most conditions and it becomes a stumbling block and difficult to explain. We'll talk about that a bit more later. So for example, a person can use this for a normal person to maintain preventive health, the sick person to improve their health, the sufferer to reduce their suffering, and the incurable to have hope of a cure. The ones without hope to rekindle their hope. The incurable diseases expert across spectrum finding cures. We call them miracles. Others feel it is incredible and lucky, but we find Shivambu works to help people. Illnesses ranging from common cold, cough, fever, arthritis, painful joints, bad backs, etc. Irreversible diseases like blood pressure, diabetes, cancers, etc skin conditions and some severe conditions too. Okay, so you dis discuss more about the uh, problems and how they occur and how Shambhu work on them. Correct. So I would uh, like to ask you some facts which comes under your observation your, uh, during this 25 years of practice of Shivam. Okay, all right. So there are a lot of interesting facts we have observed over the years. Most of these conditions across spectrums, when I say spectrums, different diseases, different systems, responded favorably to Shivamu intervention. Various different dosage, dosages are required, but eventually fully effective. What do I mean by that? Some people may benefit from only external use. Some people may need external and internal use. Some people may need a dose every morning. Some people may need to drink it twice a day. We have put people on Shivamu fast with a normal diet. We have put people on Shivamu fast with nothing to eat, only Shivamu and water. And all these different combinations are required based on what their condition is, how their body responds. And based on getting results. Bottom line is we need to eat suffering. There are also prescriptions of diet, exercise, meditation, pranayam are utilized in conjunction with Shivamu based on the seriousness and severity of the condition. Coming from an allopathic background and today's medicine model, it was very surprising to note that every human suffering was curable using Shivamu except genetic disease. This was very pleasing to note as a healer, but shocking to note that a single pati with varied prescriptions can change the person's health and make their world full of joy 
energy and enjoyable life to relish. This really upset me and got me thinking. And over the years, I have discussed with different scholars, scientific minded people, practitioners and thinkers to find the solution to this burning question of Shivambu and its working. Wow, that's very great that you also search more facts about Shivambu. Mm, yeah. So, what do you think, uh, how does Shivambu work? It's a very good question. Let me try to address that. We still haven't found a magical solution, but we have offered lots of theories. So, some of my personal theories and thoughts that others have given me, I will share with you here today on this platform. It is well known that urine within the body is not really potentially called Shivamu because we know urine within the body does not heal body problems. Right. But when it is exiting the body and on contact with air, we believe Shivamu gets activated and collecting that and drinking it and using it seems to make a big difference to health. For example, here just to make a point, urine within the body cannot stop us having urinary bladder infection or urine stones, just to take a couple of cases. Right. But when urine exits the body and it's collected as Shivambu and on contact with air and when we ingest it, to our surprise in the early days and today as a routine, we know that kidney stones can be overcome. Yes. Bladder infection can be overcome. This is just listing a couple of them. There are a lot of other instances of other diseases, but just to make the point here. We know Shivambu is a filtrate of blood with all that is in excess at that point in time, being passed as urine. We also know that urine is known to be sterile. Allopathic model clearly states that urine is sterile. Right. So, we know Shivambu contains urea as a major component besides water. We also know that when we eat food, whether it is rice and lentils, bread, meat, sweets, savouries, food is digested in the stomach and the intestine to create finer elements that are required for the body. So when I say finer elements, we are talking about all the elements of nature, sodium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, etc. are all extracted from the food we eat and then it is sent to the blood. Right. And then the blood supplies it to the rest of the body. When we drink urine, which is Shivambu, it is only natural that we are ingesting those same finer elements in the refined form as they were available in the blood directly into the body. So, the real term of fast food is not our hamburgers or Kentucky fried chicken or our vada paos or any of these quick meals that we get. The real fast food I believe is drinking urine because there all the nutrients are available directly to be absorbed in the stomach going into the blood. They don't need the process of go bypassing through yes. the intestines and break down and all that. And uh, we can say that it is concentrated, right? Correct. Okay. All those elements are in their purest form because they have just come out of blood yes. into the urine and then we ingest it. Right. So you are right. So it is like replacing all those elements directly into the blood. Wow. So, now when we looked at that theory, we thought that we had it all sorted out. And at that point, we felt that a combination of the hygroscopic quality of urea, which is in abundance in urine, right. and the fast food elemental diet consumed, makes the body cleansing process faster and also gives us more energy and helps get rid of all the unwanted toxins and thus assist healing. But as we started delving into the matter further, we felt this did not explain the benefits of Shivambu fasting from 1 to 10 days. People actually got better when compared with fasting without Sh Shivambu. There was a noticeable difference in outcomes, energy levels were higher, skin was more glistening, positive feeling of wellness and a desire to work hard even during the fasting period. So no lack of energy and tiredness. 
Then I explored the sound purification theory propounded by a senior friend of mine who is a practitioner of Shivambo and a scientific minded engineer. He explained to me that in the engineering domain of sound and speaker technology, he said, I don't know whether you know, but he was telling me that when you speak from the microphone here, the voice doesn't come out instantly. I said, what do you mean? Because I was surprised. He said, the voice is put through the system 5, 10, 20, 30 times before it comes out through the speaker. And in that process, there is more refining and refining and refining of the sound wave, which is why you hear it in a wonderful format. And his logic was, similar to that, when you recirculate urine and drink it every day, over time, the body purifies and purifies and purifies, and thus you get healthier. Again, I thought that sounds a very good theory, so I incorporate that and try to look at that, and maybe that theory is valid. Okay. Well, I'm just putting it forward for all of you to share. Then a long time ago, I read a book on vibrational medicine. It was a fantastic book. And reading that, it basically talked about any intervention on the body, whether it is acupressure, whether it is acupuncture, whether it is Ayurvedic herbs, whether it is massage, whether it is allopathic medicine, whether it is homeopathic medicine. It basically stated that the body has certain vibrations and the medicine has certain vibrations. And if the vibrations are complementary and suitable for healing, then the effect will be magical. And it was talking about a modality of assessment of vibrations of everything you intervene with. So whether I, if I'm going to take an aspro, I just check my body vibration, put the aspro in there, and if that's a matching, I should take it and instantly I will get better results. Right. The great relief I had was this will go across pathies. Mm -hmm. And eventually all pathies will have a great chance to be equated and we can then use this vibrational medic uh, theory concept to do the best for the patients using allopathy, homeopathy, ayurveda, acupuncture, shivango, whatever is going to work best. Okay. Unfortunately, I have to say that book I read was way back in the 80s, nearly 35 years ago. And I haven't seen much progress in that area, which is very sad because I really thought at that time that that would become the new modern medicine in the next generation. Now, getting back to Shivambu, Shivambu, I believe, considering the vibrational theory, that maybe one of the problems with Shivambu is if there is an excess condition or a deficient condition, Shivambu still works. Right. Now, how can that happen? Because in our day-to-day -day knowledge, we don't think of that. We think of separate to increase and separate to decrease. Right. And the only thing that came to mind was maybe according to the vibrational theory, Shivambo has got certain vibrational impressions that when you drink Shivambo in the body, it sends a message to say, this is the correct vibration for the body. If you are excess, come and join me. If you are deficient, come and join me. Right. And maybe that's how it works. And that was just another theory I had.